Welcome to the next assembly video for the RepRap Prusa i3. In this video, we are going to assemble the Y carriage and um, belt and motor. So um, let's go ahead and get started with the uh, Y carriage. And um, <clears throat> on this, you'll notice there are uh, slots for the bearings, for the linear bearings. And um, there's holes on either side. Now these are actually tapped um, for M3 bolts, but um, <clears throat> the original specification actually calls for zip ties. And zip ties work just, just fine for this part of the assembly. Let's go ahead and put these on first. I'm going to use a pair of pliers to tighten it. As long as it doesn't wiggle, that's tight enough. You don't want to over tighten it. Clip off the excess zip tie. <clears throat> then we'll also need to install the Y belt holder. And it doesn't really matter which direction this, this goes on, but. Um, and now, <clears throat> also, I wanted to mention that um, when you're when you're trying to figure out which bolt to use to attach things, um, you just essentially want to use the shortest one you can use. And um, in this case, since this is going to be fit into here about so, this is a 10 millimeter, so that'll work just fine. So it's a 10 millimeter M3. Oh, and then also keep in mind, you know, all of the holes on the aluminum plates for the frame and for the Y carriage are M3. You don't want to tighten it too much since um, this, uh, this is a stainless steel bolt. This is an aluminum, um, you know, carriage, so you don't want to tighten it too much because what will happen is you'll strip the threads in the carriage before you strip the threads in the bolt. Since stainless steel is harder than aluminum. Okay, well that takes care of that part. Um, <clears throat> let me go ahead and set this aside for a moment. And... work on um, on this part here <clears throat> this is the idler for the uh, Y belt um, and uh, to install this we'll need to uh, we'll need, we'll need, let's see I think it's yeah we'll need the uh, 25 millimeter M4 bolt and then um, the uh, M4 fender washers and some M4 washers and the, um, the smaller bearing as well. So you start uh, putting the bolt into the idler piece. Then you want to put a uh, small washer, M4 washer, flat washer. And uh, you can use pliers to do this. It's kind of tricky. So it's a flat washer and then a fender washer. And then another 
favorite flat washer. And then <clears throat> the bearing. And this is a 624ZZ bearing. And then another uh, flat washer. This is where it really starts to get tricky. going to use a small allen key for the uh, grip screws for the pulleys to try to help place that. Ugh, it's kind of magnetic. <clears throat> and then another flat washer or a fender washer, excuse me, M4 fender. Okay, and then the last one, probably the trickiest one, is one more M4 washer. Okay, there, there you have it. Okay, and then lock this in with an M4 lock nut. M4s um, use the seven millimeter. And then also, if you don't have open box end wrenches, you could also use crescent wrenches, by the way. Okay, when you tighten this, you wanna make sure that um, you don't over tighten it. Um, oops. This just needs to actually hold this on. Um, doesn't need to like be compressed, but you can compress it just so that these fender uh, washers don't wobble, but where the uh, bearing still rolls smoothly. So. A little bit more. Okay, so now the fender washers aren't wobbling, but the bearing still rolls, rolls smoothly, so that's perfect. Okay. <clears throat> and um, the 20 millimeter M4 will go in the end here. You can go ahead and get that threaded now if you want to a little bit. Don't, uh, don't tighten it yet. Don't tighten this yet either. Okay, so now we are ready to uh, put the Y carriage on. Um, and it doesn't really matter which direction it goes in. So you can put it either way. Oh, let me do this side first. So when you put these on, you want to very carefully just sort of sort of guide it in. You don't want to uh, push it in too hard or anything because you might actually pop some of the ball bearings loose. And now what you should find is on this side, this may not, this may not actually lay in here. Oh, in this case it does, but um, <clears throat> what you have to do next is you have to um, tighten and adjust the M8 nuts here and here and here and here to make sure that this rolls smoothly and then you can go ahead and lock these down into place. So this actually feels pretty good so I'm just gonna start to get it 
tighten. I'm just gonna tighten them finger tight. Okay, when I pull it this way, I can feel some resistance. So I know that either it's too close or too wide. So I'm just gonna um, widen it a little bit and see. Oh, perfect. Okay, that feels that feels great. So I'm just gonna retighten. Oh yeah, that feels great. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and lock this down then. Check it again. Feels good. I'll lock down the bottom. And again, with these, you could use a, um, a crescent wrench instead of open boxing wrenches. Okay, that feels, that feels great. So now I'll just need to do the other side. Put it on finger tight, finger pressure tight. That feels really good. I'm just gonna lock it down. Now, if you don't like this particular method, you can you can do this another way if you'd like to. Like you can measure it out perfectly with a, uh, a digital caliper between the rods on both ends, which will work too. But um, I did this for my last i3 build and I just thought it was really easy. And uh, I printed a few parts with it and everything turns out just fine. So I don't think that there's really an issue with with this being perfect. That feels great to me, so I consider that to be good enough. Now you do have to be careful when um, when you uh, turn this upside down because these rods can fall out. Um, but uh, we are going to need to turn this upside down now to finish the process. So. Okay, and um, <clears throat> you can go ahead and lock these down now too, actually, if you didn't earlier. Okay, next uh, we can install the motor, and uh, the motor will, now when you look at the at the motor mount, you'll see that um, there's, uh, that it's inlaid a little bit for the head of the bolt on this side, and it's just flat on this side, so um, the motor goes on the flat side. I want to make sure that the wire that's coming out is going um, towards the uh, front of the rep wrap, not towards the bottom because that um, it might uh, squish the wires. And uh, for this, it's going to be uh, 10 millimeter M3s. And again, I mean, this is going to come through about that far, and so it leaves enough to go into the uh, into the motor. So it's not too much. And you might need to adjust this. Uh, this direction or this direction to make sure you have enough room for the motor to fit in here. But you want to fit it just so that the um, the shaft on the motor is about center with the um, with the frame, so that uh, the belt will be able to travel through the belt holder here. I don't have this locked down yet because I want to uh, to make sure that this is going to be centered fairly well first. Now I didn't tighten I didn't tighten this uh, top one all the way, 
because I want to get the bottom one uh, started first. Lock these down. Okay. <clears throat> and just sort of eyeball it and make sure that the center of the shaft um, is going down through the, uh, the belt clamp. And that looks um, pretty good. Let's go ahead and tighten this down. And when you tighten the uh, the top the top section, just make sure that it's kind of level, and you just kind of eyeball that. You can measure it if you want to too, but eyeballing that works just fine. That looks pretty good, and it looks real straight. You can kind of look down the shaft and see if it's aligned with with the uh, threaded here, and it looks really really good. So definitely adequate. Okay, now we need to put the pulley on the motor. I like to move it so the shaft is, is upright, or the flat side of the shaft is upright. And you want to make sure that um, when, you put the, uh, when you put the pulley on, that one of the two grub bolts um, will actually lock down to the flat side of the shaft on the motor. Okay, now you want to make sure that, uh, I'm just going to lock it down to where it won't spin around anymore. But, um, I mean, um, because it, it gets caught on the flat side of the shaft, but it can still slide on the shaft. And then, because we need to make sure that this lines up with the belt clamps. So you just need to use something straight to sort of eyeball this. So I'm going to line this up. Um, you could use a ruler or something too. This is just one of the smooth rods for later in the assembly. But um, I have it centered on the um, on the belt clamp and the belt holder, the Y belt holder. And then I'm just looking down and I can see that the pulley needs to move to the right a little bit. And now I can go ahead and tighten it. Try not to let it move around too much. That should be good. Now we're ready for the belt. Okay, when you get the belt, um, it's actually going to come in one loop. So it'll be one solid loop like this. And this is actually enough belt for, um, for the y-axis and the x-axis. So what you need to do is just cut it so that it becomes one long piece. And then you can just go ahead and work with the one long piece by, um, <clears throat> by first Okay, I'm just making sure that the, by first uh, locking in one of these sides you can kind of just bend it a little bit like this and then when you, when you put it into the slot here it'll curl up a little bit might need to roll it into a little bit of a ball and then when you put it in it should roll up enough to where it feeds upwards 
and then you're going to want to use um, just roll it over to the side like so and then um, you want the belt to be flat down to uh, this side here so you want to um, position it so that uh, you have more of the belt from the end coming down than you have from the belt on the bottom going up. So you just want to make sure that it's kind of flat. And then um, you can kind of lock the teeth in together, together a little bit and then use a zip tie to secure it that way. So just get the zip tie started, move it down. Tighten it with some pliers and snip off the excess zip tie. Then run the belt around the pulley and then run the belt around the bearing. And uh, make sure that the, um, <clears throat> the belt is on the bearing and not like on one of the fender washers or something like that. Okay, and then do the same thing with this side, sort of make a little um, circle with it and then stick it in. Oh. Uh, with this one, you actually um, want to go all the way over to this hole here. So they use the same hole. And if um, making the circle doesn't work, you can always just grab it with a pair of pliers and pull it over too. Okay, and um, this doesn't have to be super tight, just tighten it enough so that you know, it's not like uh, just flopping around. And then um, at this point, you know that you don't need more than this, so you can go ahead and cut the belt and save the rest for the X axis. I'm gonna get a zip tie started on here, just to, you know, just around this area of the belt. Fold that down, go ahead and tug on it a little bit, lock it together, and zip tie it. And then use some pliers to tighten the zip tie. Here, click a couple times there. Cut off the excess zip tie and uh, Might need to slide this around a little bit to make sure that the belt is centered. Okay, that looks really good. And now we can tighten the belt by using the M4 20 millimeter, uh, 25 mm, or yeah, 20 millimeter bolt. So you want to slide this around, slide the idler across the um, M8 threaded rod. Until, until it all looks lined up really well. Just kind of eyeball it. That looks good there. So I'm going to go ahead and um, lock it in a little lightly, finger tight, with the um, M8 nuts, and then go ahead and tighten the M4 bolt to tighten the belt. And just, you just sort of feel it. Um, you don't want it. To be, you don't want. It, you don't want it to be too tight. And you don't want it to be too loose. But that uh, that feels pretty good. So now we can go ahead and lock these uh, M8 nuts. 
And by the way, if this ever loosens, you can just, you can just loosen these and then uh, tighten it some more with the M4 anytime you need to. Okay, that looks really good. And then uh, we can flip it back right side up and just be careful um, not to uh, let the rods fall out. Okay, now it's nice and tight. It's not as smooth as it was before because now we have to turn the motor in order to get it to move. But everything here looks like it's lined up really great. And if you move it slowly, you can actually feel each little tug of the steps on the motor. All right, and that takes care of the Y axis. Um, thanks for watching.